welcome to the HMO Success Podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Whitaker-Large, and I'm here to help you create a profitable HMO portfolio. Whether you're a brand new investor or you've been at it for a number of years, my podcast is here to help you make the most from your business, whether that is starting up, scaling or systemizing. Please hit the subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode. And if you've got an awe-inspiring project, an inspirational investing story, or a unique approach to HMOs, I'd love to hear from you. I have the honor of interviewing some amazing people from the UK and around the world for this podcast. And, you know, over the last couple of years, I've I've really had some incredible guests, people who've got some amazing stories, people who run some incredible businesses, people who are making a real change and shift in the industry. Mostly the focus is on HMOs, but I like to sometimes bring in other guests who've got other angles, other specialisms, because running an HMO is not just about a property, it's actually about a business. So today, my guest is a very special lady. Um, She's an online business strategist and an award-winning coach. And she helps service-based, sorry, she helps service-based professionals, coaches and therapists who might be you. So as well as running an HMO, you might also be running other businesses. And I believe that my guest today could really offer some help, support and insight into how she could possibly help your business to grow. One of the things that she does, and that's her speciality, is to help other people create signature programs, a kind of methodology to enable you to get your program out into the world. Why? Well, it means that you can create more consistent income, you can make a bigger impact, and you can have more freedom. And who doesn't want that? Uh, This particular guest, she is an Australian, straight talking, (laughs) no fluff type of gal, who's all about implementation. Do you like the sound of that? Well, I do too. I met this lady a few years ago at a property investing event, and we've stayed in touch ever since. And I've got lots and lots and lots to talk to her about today. It is the inimitable Kylie Anderson. Good morning, Kylie. Hello. Thank you so much. What a lovely welcome. (laughs) Well, it's great to have you on today, Kylie. And yeah, as I said in the introduction, you know, uh, your angle has not so much been HMOs, although you do actually have a background in property, don't you? Yeah, I do. I did. Um, I ran a real estate office in London for over seven years um, doing sales for my sins, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So, yes, I and you never lose it. It's interesting. I was talking to someone yesterday about it going, you never lose that nosiness of property. <laughs> Absolutely. Go into other people's properties, see how they've decorated them, see how they've designed them. I, I, I'm constantly watching design shows. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got a background in real estate. I've, um, yeah, like I said, been in sales for over seven years in, in property itself, selling high end property in London. Um, and then obviously I've got a couple of investments of my own um, and I've been around that property space. It's weird. I just kind of got into some of the property events and I've helped some property clients. So, yeah, property stuck with me. <laughs> and of course, that's how our paths initially crossed, wasn't it? A few years ago yeah. when there was a, a property business event for women and you were there presenting. And I think I was there presenting as well. And of course, the good thing about property is it allows you to do lots of other things. So it, once you've created your asset and it's bringing you in income, quite often you find that people who are so minded might go off and run a course or do a training program or do do mentoring which is exactly what I did Um, and that's kind of where you come in isn't it because you help people like me to grow a program so to tell me about how your business evolved how you got started in this space Yeah, so um, I was burnt out and exhausted from sales. (laughs) I'd been in the corporate space for, what, 15 years nearly doing high-end sales. So I kind of moved from real estate into high-end recruitment. So I had always been in that sales different environment. Um, And I just turned around one day and went, I'm so tired of building someone else's business. Basically, that's what happened. Um, I love to travel. And so I wanted some more freedom. So I went to, it was actually the National Achievers Congress. That was my turning point. I went to the National Achievers Congress and I heard all these guys doing all these other things. And I was like, oh, they're not working. They're doing this and this. And um, and that's when I got into the online space. I was like, wow, I might just check out this online marketing stuff. Um, and I got into online marketing, but I got into a bit more affiliate marketing 
which was kind of okay. Um, I learned a lot of skills, but I didn't really like the kind of get rich, quick, follow me type scenario when I first got into it. Um, so of course, me being me looked at went, well, hang on a sec, I've got all these incredible skills online, there's loads of leverage, there's all this income being in over here. And then I was like, well, how can I bring that back into the businesses and the small businesses I loved, which was obviously after being in real estate and property for a long time. Um, and that's kind of how I got started. I just sort of went, well, you know, you've got all this knowledge and skills. There's this online space that's making lots of money in the e-learning and coaching space. And, and like you said, asset creation courses. Can we help you leverage that capability? Um, and so I just started doing strategy days, starting to kind of plan things out. And then I got into um, coaching people to kind of take their ideas out of their head. That's the biggest pe thing people get stuck on is they know their stuff. They're really good at what they do, but they just don't know how to get it down on paper into a, into a program. Um, and then I started helping people launch because what I realized was um, when they had all this knowledge and skills, what they didn't then know, and the biggest barriers were things like tech. Like how do we use tech? What do we do? How do we set up our platforms? Um, and so we just started helping people. So we ended up doing a bit of a done with you type program. Um, and now I've gone on to launch 35, 40 different people into different programs. Um, and I love it. Yeah, I love it because it means that they get to share their knowledge and skills with more people, which is what I did it for in the first place. You see all these people with amazing gifts and knowledge and skills. And it's like now you can go out there and help more people and create a bigger impact. Which wow. Is, yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff. Thank you. So it sounds like you quite enjoy the the almost the design element behind it. I mean, you spoke earlier on about you love watching design programs. And I wonder whether there's a thread <laughs> running through here that, that maybe at heart, Kylie, you're a bit of a designer. You help other people design their programs. You help other people yeah. maybe, like you say, get out of their own heads and, and start to, to structure something. Uh, can you sort of describe what, what that process is? How do you do that? Yeah, so I think the key thing is, is um, we forget what we know I think that's the first thing is that most of us are experts and we do things naturally and we think oh we don't repeat the stuff or every client's unique that's the one I hear a lot it's like oh no all my clients are different I don't have a process but actually when you get into it and you start talking to people actually they do have a process most of the time and they repeat it regularly so my goal is to get that out of your head into a format um, and what I start to do is really the first thing is to do a brain dump is to go okay what do you do next so um, the most powerful exercise I do with clients is actually just letting them talk. And most people, when I do um, strategy days, the, the feedback I've had is one of the most powerful things is that I take notes. It's the other way around. Whereas most people are used to taking notes and I don't because what I'm listening for is their process. Um, but ideally what you're doing is think about it like... Um, uh, swimming like learning to swim you know you have to go through stages to learn to swim so you know you've got to get comfortable with the water you've got to be able to probably do at least doggy paddle so you can survive you know you go into floating on your back so that you can understand you learn to breathe um, you know and then you start to get into the strokes where you start to master your swimming and what you need to do so basically what you do is you start to think about that process in what you do and go well, okay what do I do first what's the first thing that I need to do and ideally you're trying to create a bit of a step-by-step -step process to take someone through so that they can get the outcome that they, that they desire um, and that's the best way to think about it yeah and I, I think that is um, that's really I love the analogy spoken yeah. by a true Australian of course <laughs> has because to be you, swimming <laughs> you, uh, it has to be swimming you have the best swimming team in the world I hasten to add I don't like to admit it but it's true <laughs> And and what what do you think people find very difficult about doing that? What, what is it that that enables you to do that? That often your clients struggle with. Mm -hmm. I think to, there's a couple of big things. One is they overcomplicate it. So quite often we think we have to dump our 25 years experience into one thing. Um, and it's like, no, your goal is to fast track someone's outcome, not literally brain dump everything that you've ever learned into it. So I think actually peeling it back quite often is the hardest because then they think, oh, should I add this? Should I do this? Do I need to incorporate this? Um, I remember seeing once, I remember looking at a property guys once, and I won't name names, um, but he had 25 modules on his homepage. And I just went, no way, people are going to run a mile. Um so again, you've got to understand that people want short wins. Um, you know, they want a process to follow um, and it needs to be digestible. So the biggest thing for me is, is really is getting people to peel back what they do. 
and going, well, look, okay, you know this, but does that really impact them moving forward? So it's about kind of going, okay, we could put that step in, but does that really help them get to the, that end result they want? So most of the time it's actually peeling back. Yeah, so it's not, yeah, most people want to bump, um, dump the kitchen sink in basically everything into it. Um, so it's looking at the process going, okay, actually, how can we streamline it? How can we make it easier for your client to digest? You know, what's the actual next step that they need to take to move forward in their process? Um, and I think that's probably the hardest thing to do for yourself. Um, and yeah. I think sometimes that's when you need someone else to go, does that really make an impact or is it just something that you think they need to know? Um, and then really just putting it into then a process. So the next the sort of next step really is brain dumping it all and then simplifying it. So that's when I chunk back up and go, okay, so we've got these five steps. How do we chunk that maybe into three phases or three steps so it becomes more digestible for people? Um, and I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really, really interesting. Um, and, and I think what you're saying is is so true. And it's interesting as you're talking, Kylie, I'm thinking about people who may not be thinking about launching a program or running a course. But even people that I work with who are HMO investors, the majority of whom will be listening to the podcast, they'll be thinking, well, how does this relate to me? Well, mm -hmm. one of the things I would say is when you're trying potentially to raise private finance, you have a product, you are selling something. Thing. it's it's not a sale in terms of goods but it is a service and it seems to me that that same methodology that you're adopting and approaching it with your clients this is something that investors also need to have isn't it yeah definitely have, have, have you had that experience of working with investors in that kind of way yeah well I've, I've worked with a couple of property guys in that way as well in relation to because the thing people don't realize is when you're creating courses and programs it's not just about the course or program as an income like you said or teaching something sometimes it's also about educating your customers so educating people which means that you bring in higher quality clients into your business or like you said if it's an investor you could be educating them on your process for free so um, you know, I'm at the moment working with, for example, a legal team who help with wills, estates, things like that. And they're looking to disrupt the industry because they they hate these cheap wills that are killing people. Um, you know, they're going to basically set them up to fail in the future. And then the solicitors basically just take loads of money off you down the track. Um, so, you know, they want to disrupt that industry. So the first way we're doing is we're setting up an education program for people to understand what's actually the problem. And they're going to give that away for free so they can educate their clients on why not to do it. So, you know, sometimes um, the courses and things like that can be used to either, like I said, educate people on the process or something that they need to know and understand before they potentially work with you. Or like you said, it just positions you as the expert in your field. So, um, you know, again, uh, you know, why was it that a book was ever seen as a as a you know catapult to your credibility? Um, and courses can be the same, but I tend to try and create, if you can create your methodology or a process for something, whether that's investing, whether that's, um, you know, how you work with investors um, or whether it's your philosophy around wealth and, and property creation and things like that, you can then turn that methodology into a presentation. So if you're speaking, you're on stage or you're out networking, you can also then turn it into your book so that you've got, again, additional credibility in relation to where you are. So for me, it's like, where can you create that process or methodology that makes you stand out from the crowd, makes you different? You know, if you're an investor looking to invest or, you know, you're wanting to work with high quality people, how do you take them through a process? What's your assessment of them? And can you streamline that so that you're actually working with really, really good quality people? But they get to know your values. They get to understand what you're about as well. So there's many different ways to, to use courses and programs and things like that as well. Yeah, I think that's that's so true. Um, I, I love your approach there because you, you're 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 kind of pre-qualifying people, aren't you? Just yep. simply by putting out some education about the way that you work, you're sifting because there'll be some people who'll be more attracted to what you offer because you're being explicit about uh, requirements or explicit about um, foundations that are needed before you can move on to the next step. Yep. And in a way, it's it's educating your audience, but it's also pre-qualifying them. So those who come onto 
the next step and think, oh yeah, I'd like to like to know more about this particular person because I, it's a sort of subliminal message, isn't it? Mm. Yes, I fit into that category. I'm that kind of a person. I like this kind of approach. I'd like to work with Kylie. That's I think it. that she's she's the one for me to work with because I can see how she works and it's it's making what I call the implicit explicit. And too too many people, I think, in business and and sometimes in property as well, make it a bit vague and it's not clear. And 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 yet, what you're suggesting is actually, if you can clarify and simplify what your process is, not only will you get better clients, but actually, it will be quicker. It will be a yeah. faster process as well. Yeah, and they get to know, like, and trust you faster. So, and again, you know, when when people are assessing who, where to put their money, when people are assessing who to work with, you know, things like that build your credibility because it's like, well, wow, they they're not just fly by the night. They're not just you know the guy down the road doing the next deal sort of thing. It's like, well, actually, no, they have a process. Process. They have a system. They follow. They worry about standards. They worry about quality. So again, you know, if you're on the other side of it looking for investors. What's your process for your business? So, you know, with your HMOs, you've got a system and a process. So people see that and they go, oh, wow, she's systemized. You know, she's structured. She knows what she's doing. She's repeated it. So when I'm looking to invest, who would I look to invest with? You know, someone that's got a system or a process to go, well, actually, she's done it once. She's got evidence, you know, and now you've done it hundreds of times. (laughs) But do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So, again, it can start to position you as the expert to actually attract investors as well. Mm, so nice. you know, things like that people don't think about how it you know it, I mean we always talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a classic one I mean how often has that methodology been used uh, around the the traps whether it's in you know coaches trainers lecturers university that's been used for years um, and again so if you can create your own process people quite often quote it as well or use it yeah. Yeah, I I have seen my my own five step system be yes. certainly adopted and borrowed and sometimes completely mm, plagiarized. That's not good. No, we don't <laughs> plagiarize because again it makes you different. I mean, and the good thing is as you know, no one will ever do it like you anyway because you know, you are unique in your own brand and what you do and how you do it. Um, And I guess in a way, it's funny because someone said that to me once. Well, how do you protect your IP? And someone else, I said, look, someone's going to adopt it always. There's never, if you look at any business out there, it's been adopted from something else, change, tweet, as long as they're adding their own to it. I mean, come on, seriously. Um, You can't plagiarize someone else's process and just claim it as your own. Um, but you know, look, look at you know Richard Branson. I mean, he says take a take a product and make it better, doesn't he? You know, that's why they did the airlines. That's why they did the trains. It's like, how can you improve on something, or how can you put your own spin on it? What do you do? We all take inspiration from someone else's model or process because that's how we learn. You know, because we learn by doing, we learn by adopting what we've learned, and then you're probably teaching your clients or teaching people anyway what you do. So you've adopted it from someone else anyway. But then it is, yeah, ideally get your own methodology. Yes. <laughs> no, guys, oh. Trust your own knowledge and skills. Do you know what I mean? You've got your own knowledge and skills. And I think that's a trust thing. It's like, yeah, you know, have credibility in your own right. It, it, it's, you know, it, the methodology is just a process. But if you haven't got your own credibility, it'll never make it anyway. And that's really about your brand, isn't it, Kylie? That's about understanding that you as an individual have your own brand and that you you bring your own values, you bring your own perspective, you bring your own branding to that process. So even if it might look similar to somebody else's process or system, you can actually uh, differentiate it in the market. Push again. Yeah. And that's the key is no one else will ever do it the same way you will. They'll never deliver it the same way that you will. They'll never teach it the same way. They'll never interact like you do. Your personality and your own experiences is what brings something to light. So even if you sat there and said to me, right, Kylie, here's two modules exactly the same. I'm going to tell it different to what you will, because I'll tell it from my own experiences or stories or, you know, you never you always bring content to life with case studies, examples and ideas. That's never going to be the same. So even if you took the basic foundations of someone else's program, which obviously we do not recommend, do not do it ever, um, you know, but you're never, ever going to be the same. There's, mm. there's just no way because the only way for a good program to work or a good course or any sort of education process is to bring it to life with thing, real life case studies, um, you know, and whether that's your own stories, your own anecdotes, your own results or someone else's results. Um, mm. And that will never be the same through anyone else. And then, yeah, the way you deliver it and the way you teach it will always be different. So, Kylie, you work with a wide range of people 
what what kind of businesses have you been involved in launching or, or doing this this work with because you're not just working in the property field no i work i generally work with coaches or service based businesses so anyone that's kind of got a one on one type service um or a really strong skill set so like you said with, when it was property it was like i've got a strong skill set i've got a proven method i've got a process to work with um i'm working i worked with a financial planner they wanted to get into the coaching space. So they wanted to help their wealthy clients get wealthier, basically. But they wanted to get to the coaching, get past some of the money blocks. So we've added another income stream to their business. So looking at going, how can you add a service to your business? And that's one of the things I really enjoy is, is do you have a current service that's not leverageable? It's got no time, you know, it's, it's, it's you can't, um, you know, leverage your time around a program. Um, and that's the best part. What I do is like sometimes you can like I've got a client at the moment who's in the recruitment industry. He's got an incredible recruitment business um, and he's building a mastermind coaching program on the side because he wants to work with some of his top CEOs that he works with in the recruitment. But also it gives him another income stream that he only really has to deliver it in two or three hours a month. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's it's leverage. It's that sort of capability. You can add another six figures to your business with, you know, two, three, four hours of delivery a month. So and that's that's where I also enjoy doing it. But yeah, coaches and and anyone that's got a service based business generally the easiest ones. I don't generally work with product based businesses unless they want to add an income stream. So product based businesses normally they want to build a community. So they might want to build things like membership sites because they've got a following, um, and they might want to teach some of their processes. So like I know there's a couple of really big sites around even nails having nails done. There's a massive membership site around nails done. So that's where you wouldn't think necessarily that you could, um, but building communities around that. Um, What else have I done? I'm just thinking about a different one. I helped an interior designer build out her first interior design course. So she helps property people teach interior designing. Um, You know, how do they add value to their properties? How do they learn some of her skills and then not have to maybe pay for an interior designer? So again, um, it's really, if you've got a skill set that you think that someone else could use, but maybe they can't afford to work with you. Sometimes it's like, um, you know, I've got a client at the moment who is in um, Louisa, you know, Louisa. So Louisa's just created her first program around helping uh, helping CICs and things like that raise funds. How do you set up your CIC effectively? And the reason she did that was to consult with her at a consultancy rate is normally around 10 to 15 grand minimum. And she works with some of the top, top um, charities around the country. So, of course, what she wants to do is distill some of her knowledge into some of the people that are coming through and they're growing their CICs. um, And she wants to help them do it the right way and help them get funding quicker. So now she's distilled it into a program, which is only 1500, I think, at the moment or going up to two. You know, so it makes it more accessible sometimes. So if you've got knowledge and skills and you want to do it where you make things more accessible, um, it's another great way to to build your um, build your own income, but also help other people along the way. Now, one of the other things that you are passionate about, and this yes. year has seen somewhat of a, a launch of this <laughs> uh, new yeah. angle of your work, yeah. is helping women in business. So Kylie, I'd love to spotlight what you've been doing around this because it's incredibly exciting. And um, I'm very honoured to be part of this, uh, this movement, but you are spearheading it. So tell us a bit more about Iconic Wealth for Women. Yeah, so basically along my journeys of doing what I've been doing, one of the biggest frustrations I had was there's two things that kind of sprung to mind with me. One of them was there's incredible women out there building businesses who are broke, that can't just seem to get their knowledge out there in the right way. Um, And I was just like, why? You've got amazing knowledge, amazing skills. What is it that you're not learning or understanding to actually grow your long-term wealth? And then I saw the other extreme of some of our, especially some of the online guys I work with, doing millions of dollars worth of sales, going, okay, now what? What do I do with it? Um, And so one of the things I wanted to start to do was to start to have more conversations around wealth. Um, And it was interesting when I called it Iconic Wealth for Women, I was saying earlier that wealth triggered so many people. Even the word wealth for women triggers women. Um, And they think about it all has to be about money. And it's not. For me, wealth was about making a difference. Um, You know, how do you give back to society? How can we pull together and work together? Um, And I like to say I 
wanted to be the little mini Oprah of wealth. I wanted to bring conversations together. My goal wasn't to teach wealth. It's not about that. It's about starting conversations. So women start to talk more about money comfortably. They start to understand some more of the jargon in the industry. How can they operate so that they can think about not only short-term income, but long-term wealth? Because, um, and it was the financial planner I worked with that triggered a lot of me going, okay, it's time not to hold back on this. You've been sitting on this idea for a year. Um, Because statistically, it was like one in four women were going to be in poverty in retirement. And I was like, how is that possible? We're building businesses. We're earning more money than we've ever, ever done. And it's because we're not necessarily thinking long term wealth. Um, You know, we might be because quite often when we earn money, what do we do with it? We give it to our kids. We help our family. You know, we quite often give it all away. (laughs) Um, And so buy a new handbag, buy a new handbag. Yeah. Got to have the shopping fetishes in or experiences (laughs) or travel or whatever it is that your fetish is. Um, But again, so we quite often do that. We don't think about necessarily investing. We don't think about our own retirement. So, you know, I was talking to a lovely lady the other day, incredible at what she does. Nine years she's been with a partner, has obviously been a mum, looked after three children. They've separated. She has nothing. No retirement plans at all. She's now in her mid-40s and she's sitting there going, now what? And that's the sort of conversation we need to shift to go, look, even if you're in a loving relationship, Maybe just put 25 quid into an investment pot. Let it sit there. Let it grow. It's either going to pay your kids down the track or something you can use for retirement, whatever, but build some independence in relation to your income. And I think that's where, for me, it was about starting conversation. So um, I I came together with the idea, the concept, as you know, (laughs) and just went, thinking about launching this, don't quite know what it's going to look like yet. All I want to do is start some conversations. So we started the community with a summit and um, we've been running, obviously, now live panel discussions. I love the panel discussions where we talk about a particular theme um, and we share the wisdom. um, And then we've got ideally um, live trainings around specific topics. But the goal was um, just to bring people together to go, no questions, a stupid question. If you want to ask a question, if you want to find out about a topic, come and just hang out with us and find out about a topic. Um, And of course, what I realized was soon after that, I've got an incredible network (laughs) um, that I'd never asked anything of. It was really interesting. I didn't realize how powerful my network was until I put something out there and went, hey, guys, are you interested in this? And all of a sudden, obviously, incredible people like you step forward and went, yeah, I am. I'm really interested in this. Um, And that's kind of how Iconic Wealth got started. And then, as you know, we wrote the book. We all came together into the book. Um, (laughs) So we brought the book together into Iconic Wealth for Women and it's how to grow your income, create wealth, but live a fulfilling life because that's what it's all about is what's fulfilling for you. Um, And then, as you know, then then the next step was, well, great, we've got this book, we've got this incredible community, now what? And then we decided to run the live event. So we're running our first ever annual live event um, and that's in September. So it's all very exciting. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a journey. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I think it is fantastic um, in, in, in terms of the, the women I've known who have sort of uh, put forward these kind of ideas in the past about the importance of women being financially independent and so on. The main one who comes to mind is Kim Kiyosaki, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the the, um, the American um, sort of partner of Robert Kiyosaki. And uh, she's written a couple of books and she's she's run a few. Uh, I, I actually went to an event that she was at in London a few years ago. Yeah, no, um, yeah. But it's really great to have somebody who is, well, you're not exactly homegrown, but we <laughs> borrowed you. Nearly. <laughs> 20, 20 something years I've been here now <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you know we we love you as our own Kylie Thank and you. um I, I think this is a really excellent excellent uh launch because and and, and um strategy and idea uh because I I like you meet very many women who may be relying on their husband for their retirement or their partner for retirement haven't thought about their own wealth, haven't thought about their own uh, money uh, position, really uh, maybe a bit scared of it, maybe Mm -hmm. don't really understand it, don't really understand how money works, possibly been in and out of employment because they've been having children and they took time off and then they went back. Uh, So they don't really understand how to build an asset base. They don't understand about residual income or, you know, long-term wealth. Um, So I think what you're doing is positioning it as being uh, accessible for women and I think what's lovely about it is the 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 colors that you've used the branding you've used (laughs) 
is is really <laughs> clever colors, absolutely yeah. <laughs> but it's lovely because the, the purple and the gold are you know they're about wealth they're about riches but they're also quite female kind of colors as well you know who doesn't like a bit of bling you yeah. know we all do don't we so I and I hope at the event in September I will see you in a gold and purple dress <laughs> I'm working I'm trying to find the right material the other day I was like I need something that's on brand you, do. you know how hard it is to find something in magenta <laughs> absolutely well, yeah we'll, I'm we'll working all be on it yeah. we'll all be I know thanks for, for that one um but um, it is and it is and it's a fine balance it's interesting because I've never been a real you know me I'm, I've never been a real girly girl in that regard um but it's interesting but I said to them I said look I want it to be fun and interesting as well so like you know with the event I was like it's a conference there's some really incredible speakers it's going to be interesting but I also want to have a bit of fun like I want to kind of go look it doesn't have to be so serious you know money and this is the thing I think we need to get rid of some of the taboos around wealth to go look it's not for just rich people it's not just for wealthy people and I think that's been interesting because even with like I said the name with the event I've had people go oh but I'm not wealthy should I be there And it's like, well, yeah, more, even more reason you should be there. But it's interesting. As soon as the word wealth gets mentioned, we think, oh, it's not for us. You you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's not me. I'm not there. And it's like, that's the sort of boundaries we've got to break down because wealth can be for anyone and wealth means something to someone. Everything is different. Like that could be for me doing 10 million. It could be for you doing a hundred thousand. It could be doing 10 grand. Like wealth is different to everyone. Um, but it's about your own wealth and your own fulfillment and building that to suit whatever lifestyle you want to have. Um, and I think that's the sort of barriers I want to start to bring down the UK specifically. And whether it's the Aussiness in me, <laughs> um, you know, we're a little bit more open about money and conversations and taboo topics. Um, but again, if we can start this conversation, even even if it sparks one person to go, okay, do you know what? Actually, I can invest. You know, I think that was the biggest thing for me was when I started to realize well, I can just put 25 quid a month away and just let it grow and just let it sit there. Um, and I did that when I didn't have money. And, you know, now I've got more money. I'm starting to invest more and things like that. But again, I think that if we can get into those little habits and realize the power of it, that's where you never know when you're going to need it. And I think that's the thing for me. And when I, when I saw the statistics around, um, you know, our retirement and how many women were going to be suffering in retirement. I was like, I've got to got to do something about this. We've got to start these conversations. Mm. Um, and the thing I love about the women in the community is lots of them have done it late in life. And I think that's that for me is one of the most powerful messages is so many have done it in, later in their life where they completely turned their lives around and, you know, made millions now, some of them incredibly. But it's more importantly that it's never too late. It's never too late to start and you can start wherever you're at. And I think that's a really important message, Kylie, because I think for those of us who are of a certain age, you know, we are we are parents of, um, you know, children and possibly even maybe grandparents. I'm not yet, but maybe one day I will be. Um, you know, I think that you can sometimes think, oh, the, the younger generation has got all of this sewn up, you know, they, they understand TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. They understand all these other <laughs> you know, <am>. fancy. <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> I've getting there, it. getting there, getting there. <laughs> TikTok's um, great, by the way. If people are, if people go, why are you doing TikTok? Because TikTok is great for traffic. So eyeballs on TikTok is phenomenal at the moment. So, you know, lots of people are using it for eyeballs to get it onto other social media. So, um, you know, it's one of the fastest ways to grow a quick following to get eyeballs. But it's also people that are actually taking action, doing something. So if you think TikTok is just for dancing and having fun, it's not. It's actually very, very lucrative from that from that space so just to go back to tiktok sorry but yeah yes, the okay kids have got it, the kids Chal- have got it challenge nailed. accepted challenge accepted kids have got it nailed yeah <laughs> you know it, it, when we, when social media sort of first launched of course all of us were were right there at the beginning you know so mm-hmm. so we're all experts in facebook but of course my kids go what what book yeah. you know they are not <laughs> yeah. even on it so, so linkedin what's that yeah <laughs> yeah that's it but of course the, 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 the yeah. fact is that there are more than enough people in the world to find other people who i, I quite often speak to clients who aren't on any social media they, yeah. they've got they found me through other means and methods and they they, they aren't on social media at all no, so I find that it's fascinating in this day and age like absolutely <laughs> not one social media account really like why what's wrong <laughs> absolutely but but that's that just yeah. shows doesn't it that you don't yeah, need to be a master of all things no, to be able don't. to attract no. clients it's really about as you going back to what you said earlier on right I want to talk a little bit about this event in September Kylie mm-hmm. tell us a bit more about what someone can expect 
about how much the tickets are, about what the date is, who's speaking, what are they going to get if they come along for this particular amazing iconic world for women day <laughs> well it's the first event so that's just exciting in itself no um so obviously you know what i'm trying to do is like i said the goal of it is to start conversations it's a conference so there's going to be educational piece you're going to learn things as you go but also really it's to inspire and spark conversations so i'm trying to do a different format which is going to be really interesting because my goal is to have some keynote speakers so you listen and learn and be inspired and you'll take something away from those, you'll take something on their wealth journeys and you'll learn tips and things. But also there's going to be really interactive panel discussions. Um, and basically we've got, I should know this off by heart, we've got four themed panel discussions because what we've tried to do is to go, okay, the people that are going to be at the event, they're probably in two camps. They're either still growing some of their income and they want to grow and maybe they've got some things that are holding them back or maybe they're not quite managing their money properly or they're not really getting to where they want to go. Um, and then we've probably got the other side of the camp that are in their um, wealth journey and they're growing their income beautifully and maybe they're looking at diversifying portfolios. So basically what we've done is we've got a different panel discussion so you can choose. So in the morning you can choose one to go to and in the afternoon you can choose one and you can mix your day up basically. So we've got a really strong property one because obviously property is such a big wealth vehicle. We needed to have a property one. Lots of people showed interest in that. Then we've got a money mindset kind of money management one. So if maybe you're not quite where you want to go, that's probably a great one to go to because you're going to be talking around, you know, what's maybe the things that are holding your back or maybe you can learn a money management tip of, of how to, you know, do those small incremental changes and maybe budget a bit tighter so you can put 20 quid away or 50 quid or whatever it is, or maybe you've got 500 or wherever you're at. Um, so that's kind of been the morning session. And then the afternoon session, we're getting into those kind of investment side. So if you're really into that kind of investment stocks and you want to know more about building your long term investment strategy, um, you've probably got some money to start to invest. So that's probably for you. Um, and then the other side is more around the business building side of it. So it's like if you still want to grow your income and you're looking for ideas on how you could potentially create more income to build your long term wealth, then you probably want to join the business building side of it. So hopefully we've got the angles covered that people can kind of come and experience something for themselves. That was the key for me is around what's your own wealth journey? What do you want to create? Um, and then obviously we've got some incredible speakers talking about philanthropy. We've got people talking about property. We've got people talking about um, H H HMOs. HMOs, sorry. I should say specifically HMOs since I'm on here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Wendy, I should really figure out HMOs. <laughs> but again, it's, it's, it is looking at different wealth vehicles. It's like, you know, what might work for me? Because one of the things for me, someone said to me, you know, what some of the outcomes you want people to get from the event? And I think for me, there's a couple of things. There's one is just incredible collaborations and networks. Like, um, you know, when we did the soft book launch, there was 45 of us in the room. And one of the biggest feedback I got was the caliber of women in the room. Um, and this event is going to be the same. The caliber of people signing up to the event is amazing. Um, and such a, a mix of backgrounds and industries, because that was my other big thing was, there's so many siloed in industries where we've got knowledge. Like when I when I started to cross over internet marketing with business and small business, you know, I've created millionaires from doing that. And I think that for me, a lot of information that we silo down, like you're very much in property, um, you know, and it's like lots of people are in their silos. And I think the collective is actually crossing over sometimes is we'll learn something from someone else and go, oh, hang on a sec, if I applied that in here, that could give me this or that could do this. Um, and I did the same in my business when I started working with a, a mergers and acquisitions guy. I didn't even think about a different business structure. Now I've got partnerships and I've got shares in other people's businesses from that one conversation with him. Now, I wouldn't have thought about that if I'd stayed in my coaching and online space. So that for me is, again, it's sparking conversations across different industries that might go, do you know what, that just might double my income. Or that bit might just go, oh, wow, I've learned a new wealth tip I didn't even know about. So part of it's sparking conversations and sparking ideas. So you're just going to meet some amazing women in the room. Um, you know, there's 18 of them in the book. 
all these incredible speakers in the book. If you haven't got the book yet, you need to grab the book. Um, and so you can learn about some of the speakers before you come. Um, they will share their stories, their journeys, their wealth tips, their knowledge, you know, advice in there for you if you're starting or growing or developing. Um, there's a, a beautiful mix. So there's 18 authors who are joining all the panels. Um, so they're the panel discussion. So you can come and ask them questions, you know, and I think that's the key. You know, they'll all do intros so you'll understand who they are, what they're doing and, and why they're here, what's their wealth journey. Um, but really, for me, it's about you asking the questions is like, what what's that one burning question you've always wanted to find out? What's the one thing you've never, never had the courage to ask, but you could ask a female panel? And I think, you know, I, I was very reluctant doing a female event. You know, I was. Um, I've always worked with men. I've been in a male dominated environment. And I was like, oh, I can't just do something for women. I, I don't like I've always been inclusive of what I've done. Um, but for me, it's that it's I don't want to talk to a man in a suit. I don't want to go to a man for advice. Actually, I just want to ask some intelligent questions to some amazing women. Um, so that for me is what Iconic's all about, is like come together, ask those questions you've never, ever wanted to ask, that you've been embarrassed to ask, or maybe let someone else ask it for you and learn from them. Um, you know, if you're not game enough to maybe ask it, someone else to ask it for you. Um, so, yeah, there's an incredible mix of panel discussions. Um, one of our keynotes, Ruby, is amazing. She's got an incredible journey of how she built her business. And one of the big themes running through Iconic is also is about giving back, is that impact you can have on society. Um, and Ruby has the most amazing story of what she's done in relation to how she's not only successfully created income, because I think there's a big gap around, oh, you either have to give back and, and be philanthropic and hand over and you can't make money at the same time. Um, and so Ruby's story is incredible of how she's actually made. I mean, she took her business, I think, to 12 million now in three years. Um, but she's also doing something that's impacting society. So I uh, can't wait to hear more about her journey. There's, you, there's just incredible speakers. Like it's, it's just going to be a buzz. I think the thing for me is just going to be an incredible room. There's going to be a high vibe energy around it. You'll come away with something out of it for sure. Um, there's lots of goodies and goodie bags and things like that. And, um, you know, um, we're going to try and do a prize. We're raising money for the... Um, um the women's foundation so we're trying to raise money for women's projects so um lots of people have already donated when they bought tickets so we're collecting all that up um and basically we're putting that to some women's projects whatever they need in the in the foundation at the time um and that'll get allocated out to some women's projects as well so um yeah so it's about doing good but really it's about having a great day in london i mean we're in a beautiful venue it's westminster chapel i mean it's amazing venue um and really it's yes it's treating yourself to have a day of inspiration ideas and and getting out there with amazing women yeah. and it sounds like whatever level you're at whether you're just beginning you're just becoming a bit more enlightened or thinking about your own wealth journey whatever that means to you like you say whether yeah. it's, it's not just financial wealth but it's maybe emotional wealth it's also uh physical wealth wealth and health um yeah. but it's it's about being able to ask questions of real women in the room people who maybe you have either put on a pedestal or people who have seemed rather maybe out of reach you know they've all contributed to this book so they're going to be authors if they haven't already written written a book before they're now contributing to your amazing <laughs> yeah. book which is a fantastic yeah. mixture as you say 18 women who've all put forward their stories uh their particular slant their their particular business ideas and how they've they've grown their own businesses and uh it, it allows you to mix with them. You'll be in the coffee queue with them. You'll be you'll be eating your lunch with them. You'll be able to go up to them in the break and say, can I just ask you a question about this, please? Or can you tell me a bit more about this? Yeah. Now, where do you get that opportunity? It just doesn't happen in life, does it? No, and I think that's the thing as well. And I think the, the thing I love about it is the experts like you in the community don't see them any different to the person down the road. And I think that's the nice thing is like a lot of the women are really humble. They're just like, well, we've, we've just done it. We just took that first step. And I think for me, that's when, like you said, if you're sitting there having a coffee with someone, I always say when you're at a conference or an event anyway, is you never know who the person is you're sitting next to. Um, and I think that is really powerful is you don't know who they are. You could be sitting next to a multimillionaire. Now, that doesn't matter because they're the same as you. And I think that's the that's the big thing for me is they're no different to you. They're just at a different stage to you. That's it. You know, the process is the same. It's like, and I know Steph Taylor says this a lot, you know, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. Because Steph was the same. Steph used to see money as someone else's. I could never be wealthy. Um, you know, and I think I hear that a lot. And it's like, no, it is for you. It's for anyone. 
and but it's down to what you choose and what you decide to do and taking that first step of coming to an event like this could be that step and it could be really scary it could yeah. make you feel really uncomfortable you know it's like oh I don't fit in here I'm not wealthy um and that for me is the most powerful thing take that first step so Kylie you've got yes. this amazing event uh yes. coming up mm-hmm. remind us of the date the time the venue uh, yep, and I'll 14. put the link in in the notes to be able to for people to buy tickets brilliant lovely and what I'll do Wendy is I'll create a um special discount code for your community actually I'll do a special discount code so you can get 20% off for Wendy's community um and we'll put that with the link so if anyone sees it off the podcast they can they can grab the link and get 20% off um so basically it's on the 14th of September it's an all-day event come prepared we're going to go all day um because you're going to kept interactive lively you're going to have coffee don't worry <laughs> um and so basically we kick off with registration about 8 30 I think we've said it for registration we're going to kick off at nine um and then we're going to go right through to five and then then we're going we're probably going to a bar from there for cocktails afterwards so hopefully you can join us come and celebrate with us as well just have a fabulous day out treat yourself that's the thing for me yeah. Um, so yeah 14th of september um we are live in london it's central it's easy to get to there's three stations around it it's very very easy to get in and out of so can't and wait. if and yes. if somebody would love to come but they're not able to join us for the day yes of course you also have your online community so do tell us a little bit more about that as well yeah I do I mean at the moment it's interesting it's, it's going to change slightly by September so if you want to get in now get in now because you're going to be one of the founders um, but basically again and this has been an interesting journey for me so you know like in my business I'm quite a high ticket girl because obviously what I do is very hands-on it's very results driven and so I work with limited clients but I get them incredible results um, for this I wanted to make it more accessible so we've said I think it's I can't remember that it's $6.99 or $7.99. It's one of those um, as a membership. And it's been really interesting. It's a push to sell the membership. I can't believe like that accessible. There's so much wealth and knowledge in that community. It's crazy. Um, And I think it's actually the concept that people don't value it because it's too cheap. So it might be changing in September. So be aware of that. So if you want to get in now, get in now, because you're going to be one of our founding members. But uh, like I said, we have a great, great group. Um, we have, like I said, various events running every month. We always have the panel discussions and we've always got a live trainer. So you can choose your topics that you're really interested in. So, you know, if you're interested in property, you can go back and watch the property panels. You can watch the people that train in property. You know, if you're interested in investing, there's investment trainers on the platform. Come and watch their watch their training and understand and learn from them um so yeah it's a growing community we're growing it and it's um i expect it to grow quite big over the next sort of six to 12 months as we get out there um a lot more because obviously this is just the start of it we're looking at potentially with the event taking it from london maybe to dubai maybe to the us so yeah it's it's we're looking at a global community of women that want to grow their wealth and help each other long term so yeah. well i'm part of it i'm in Yay. As uh, one of the dragons would say, I'm in. And, um, <laughs> Love <yeah>. you, Wendy. <laughs> really, well, I'm really excited. I think it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. I think it's really come together this year. It's a very exciting yeah. movement. And, uh, you know, I'd encourage all women who, whatever stage they're at, uh, who, are, who are interested, and like you say, have a great day out with us. And it, I, I must admit, I'm absolutely thrilled. And I'm going to be looking for that magenta dress. <laughs> I know. You can be I'm twins on the day. And obviously, if you're in Wendy's community, this is your chance to come and see her, come and watch her on the panel come and learn from her come and meet her friends you know this is what it's all about so um you know if you're sitting there on the fence and you're not sure then just buy a ticket like you said just come and take that step if something happens you can't make it you can transfer it to someone else that's the other thing um you can't get a refund but you can give it away to someone else so you can transfer it to someone else and the other thing i encourage you to do and this was one of the amazing stories from the community is someone like della della's flying in from the us now i'm so amazed at that she's one of our business experts she acquires businesses She's got an incredible story from being a waitress to to um, literally buying businesses, but she's bringing her daughter. That for me is the powerful bit. So if you've got a daughter that's sitting there, a teenager that's growing into this sort of thing, get her to come and network and hang out with you. Um, if you want to bring your daughter, I will get you a ticket for free if you bring your daughter along, if you can encourage her to come along. Because for me, that's the power for me. Is like you're not only learning what you're learning, but you're passing it down to your kids. And we talked about the kids element before, but for me, it's like that's where you can really change someone's lives. Because even though, like you said, the 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 young ones have got some of the income sorted, some of them incredible at growing income. My fear is we're going to end up in the lottery syndrome 
because they don't know how to manage it. They've never been taught how to manage money. They don't know how to t- teach the stress of it. Like you're seeing a lot more teenagers, a lot more kids at that age, especially around the young 20s and in their early 20s, stressing on money because they don't know how to manage the emotions behind it. They don't know how to deal with the stuff that come up. They don't know how to deal with their families. Imagine what their families want. I want money from you, all that sort of stuff, all those dynamics. So again, we're, we're moving into a different generation of wealth as well. Um, and you need to help your kids navigate some of that. So it's like, how are you being able to have those open conversations? If you can't have an open conversation around wealth with us, how can you do it with your family and your kids? So again, that's what we massively encourage because we are creating a different generation. And some of these kids have earned more wealth than you'll ever see in your life, Mm. but they don't know how to deal with that. How are they going to deal with that? And what scares me is I reckon the suicide rates are going to go up. It's Mm. like when you think about fame, you think about when people go into movies and fame and stuff like that, a lot of them don't, don't, don't handle it. They can't handle the fame. They can't handle the emotion that goes behind it all. You're being forever watched. You're being forever criticised. Um, and a lot of that income space, they're, they're experiencing that. Yes. So they're not I only know. gaining money, but they're also experiencing the emotion stuff that goes with it. Yeah. Well, I think you've touched on some really, really interesting topics there. And and, and maybe at some point I, we could pick up on those. I, yeah. I think that <laughs> we you could know, go again. We could. We? <laughs> we really could. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, one? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's mm. you know, it's making me think about your internal values. What what value yeah. set do you have as an individual? Therefore, yeah. what value do you do you um, apply to money and the, and the and the money and the assets that you have? But that yeah. I think is probably for another podcast, Kylie. Is, yes. <laughs> but the encouragement is to bring your daughters if you've got one. That's bring your bring daughters. someone else that you know that needs it. I think that's the other thing as well. Bring like, your mums, bring your aunties, bring yep, your cousins and your bring sisters. Bring someone you know that needs to have an open conversation and start to be a bit more inspired around their life and what they want to do. And with the 20% discount, yeah. you know, there's no excuse. I'll do a Wendy 20. <laughs> perfect just for perfect. your community brilliant thank you well that will be in the podcast notes um Lovely. so check check it out really really great to have you here today kylie i'm thank i'm you. really excited about the event and uh, i think it's going to be a sellout success so really the message is get your tickets soon because yeah, these tickets nearly... are flying off the shelf and if yep. you don't get them soon you will not be able to come a 14th of september fantastic day yeah see you there brilliant thank you so much and i can't wait to see you speak Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the HMO Success Podcast. If you'd like to know more about how you can create a profitable HMO business, please visit our website, hmosuccess.co.uk, to find out more. We have plenty of free tools and information for you there, and also on our Facebook group, The Ultimate HMO Success System. We look forward to connecting with you very soon. Thanks for listening.